Well, good morning everyone. Welcome to another podcast. It's been a while and um, I've actually tried to record two. I did one that was completely covered in wind noise and uh, the last one I did for grayling, I uh, had a great day and caught six or seven fish and got back to the uh, the office, downloaded to the computer and not recorded unfortunately, my bad. So. And then for most of the grayling season this year, I've been washed off the river. It's just been so high. It's been dreadful, really. I barely got out, but got a pretty much a perfect day today, really. It's uh, very cold. It's just just around freezing. It's been about minus four overnight. Thick frost everywhere. And there's actually a very faint flutter of snow coming down. It's a beautiful morning. And the river has actually dropped a bit um, from the torrent that's been coming down. Um, so I've just got in. And I'm going to do a bit of nymphing for the grayling. I'm just negotiating a few boulders up the river. I'm in quite a wide pool here, and it's boulder strewn. And um, I'm just going to fish some of the slightly slacker areas. Still moving through, but with the nymph rod. I've got the 10 foot uh, three weight Vision Hero. And my usual kind of setup, a long piece of... uh, I've got Maxima Chameleon, 12 pound, down to a long piece of Indicator Mono, about eight pounds, tippet ring and then down to about five foot of very fine Rio Fluoroflex Strong, one dropper on with a killer jig, and in the point I have a, a Euro Shrimp. And I'm just gonna toss it upstream, let it just bump down the boulders a little bit, and uh, try and find a grayling or two. But it's such a nice morning, it's just that classic grayling morning of frost and uh, winter. Very still, so not too, a bit nippy on the old hands, but not too cold otherwise just yet. I have a flask of soup in the car and a sandwich. Right, it's wading stick time here because it's not the easiest wade. I see the river's probably about 30 foot across, maybe a touch under. Most of the leaves now have dropped off the trees and so the surrounding meadow is just white over with frost. Uh, and just this fine flurry of snow coming down which is absolutely lovely it's just perfect for grayling fishing I said the wading is very tough here so I'm just going to be taking my time to get into position it's one of them rivers where or bits of river where you've every every step is a different type of surface it's a boulder or a drop or a, a point of bedrock or something right let's start just tossing this up and see if we can find something I thought I'll start here which is one of the places I would expect maybe a fish or two and then I might go and work my way up a a few more runs which are probably a bit harder and a bit less likely to get a fish but I thought I'd start with the easy stuff first so for anyone that's un, unfamiliar with this style of fishing, it's kind of based around Euro nymphing really, or Euro style nymphing. There's so many different slight variations, but effectively there's no fly line and we're just using the weight of the nymphs themselves to um, propel themselves up the river. So very, very light, very sensitive gear and I'm watching the coloured mono, so it's a pink and chartreuse mono. I'm watching that and also feeling through the rod tip. And then he went in. Feeling through the rod tip. And you should also feel a, feel the take if you get one. Um, the Americans often refer to this as contact nymphing because the idea is you've got contact from the flies up a straight taut piece of fluoro and then into the mono and then you've got contact through the sensitive rod right down to where you're holding it um, in order to feel the fish. Um, I'm going to just go a bit closer to the bank here because I'm struggling to touch with the wading and oops Uh, fancy going in today it's a bit chilly and uh, the river's still got a bit of colour to it mind you it normally does have here it just has a a little a peaty tinge I would say is the best way to describe it to it peaty tinge and 
it normally does here it's fairly high up the river system so we're not too far from uh, you know where the water's emerging out of the moorland and the peaty bits so it always has a bit of colour right I'm going to fish I'm up the looking upstream I'm fishing the right bank here I'm going to fish this up and then actually what I'm going to do is just walk back down to the the bottom of the pool and fish up the other bank because both banks are fishable here I have got some neoprene gloves in my pocket and I will put them on at some point when my hands get a bit nippy All right, let's keep wading up and there's a beck that's just running in here as well and it's quite a wide open pool and like I say there's a beck running in on the left it's bringing some water in so plenty of water coming down plenty of little runs and slacks for the grayling to sit in yep fish on nice grayling please don't come off They twist and turn, they're horrible fish to play. Oh, this is a good fish. Well, for this river anyway. Come on, you. Come on. Ah. Oh, he's taking me on a run. Come on. No, 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 no. Come on. You know you want to come to me. It's come to me. Oh, he's in the net. That's a beauty. Absolute beauty on the uh, Euro shrimp on the point, that one. Oh, what a start to the day that is. It's probably, uh, it's easy to overestimate grayling, but he's a lump. I'm saying it's a pound and a half, which for this river is a very good fish. Well, what an absolutely cracking start. Absolutely beauty of a fish. And what I'm trying to target today is some of the the steady runs that's where i like to my winter grayling fishing not so much in the fast riffly stuff but the steady plodding runs where they they can feed and just keep out a bit of that very fast water and that's what this is here it's a lovely big steady run this pool and it was just under my feet actually i thought it was bottom at first and then you just feel that shake shake and then your heart starts to really starts to go because you think Oh, this isn't a little one for this river anyway this is a that was a nice fish so i'm going to put the uh, nymph back in and um just see if there's anything else here that wants to take that was a beauty actually i think i can just get in towards the bank i can just fish this little slat next to the bank as well it looks like it'll hold a fish Let's see if there's anything in here. I do love winter grayling fishing. One of my favourite, especially in weather like this. It's, I'm a very much a winter person anyway. I'm not particularly fond of summer. I like cold weather. I like snow. Um, so uh, I love winter grayling fishing because it's my favourite season. Oh, that felt like a fish. And um, obviously my favourite pastime as well, so both together. My hand's biting now after touching the water, after releasing that fish. <laughs> it really is biting. I'm going to put a glove on. I'm just going to finish casting this pool and then pop a glove on. Yeah, I cannot feel my uh, thumb and finger. Oh. 
<laughs> That's the only problem with this time of year is I'm I'm very sensitive to the cold and my fingers. I can't even get a, something cold out the fridge and hold it for more than five seconds. So uh, I do get punished, but I love it. Right, onwards and upwards. Fingers feel better already with the glove on. Dippers are having a good fly around this morning. I can feel that Euro shrimp on the point just bouncing on the gravels now. That means the, the dropper just above it will be coming down beautifully. And you find on a gravel bed you'll, you'll never really get snagged on these flies. You're tied on the jig hooks they really do bounce down on the bottom beautifully. Obviously, if you come across a twig or a, a bigger boulder, you can get a snag, but they tend to bump off very quick. So we've got a nice big boulder in the river here, so I'm just fishing up towards that. Let's see if I can find another one on beautiful grayling. Just coming up to the, the boulder now. Sometimes there'll be a fish just hanging off the side of there. Uh, make sure I cover that. Now, nothing by the side of the boulder, so I'm just going to cross over the river a touch and just get a different angle on the this little nice little run just here. There's an overhanging tree, and then there's a just a steady piece of current. I'll fish that and then like I said I'm going to fish the uh, other bank. There's definitely a, a tinge of orange in the water here and I wonder if it's a bit of a bit of ochre water which is I'm not a fan of in rivers really. It's, it's just natural obviously there's nothing you can do but uh, I don't know, I just feel sometimes it puts the fish down a bit and we've had a lot of high water here and sometimes you, I just think that the high water just erodes the bottom a bit and we it uh, just unearths a bit and uh, puts a bit of uh, orange in. Anyway, we'll keep fishing. This water's a bit quicker now, but I'm going to fish it anyway, just keep slinging the nymphs up. No, nothing in there, so I'm going to wander down and then fish back up the far bank. As I'm talking here, the great clouds of uh, steamy breath in front of me shows me how cold it is. I've got some quality socks on there. I picked up a pair of years ago. The shooting stockings. So they I think they're a merino wool, is it? Very thick. And they're very long, they come right up to your knees. And uh, they're so snug. They're perfect for this kind of uh, fishing and wading. Right, I'm heading back down the middle of the river, trying not to go near the, the bit I'm gonna be fishing. I'm gonna fish up this far bank. don't think it's that deep here actually so just gonna have to watch out with the old snags although there was a beck running in so you'd think that there might be a bit of a scour a bit of a channel or a hole where that beck has 
scoured through the uh, riverbed when this waters have been up. Yeah, I'm snagging a bit on a few rocks here. I'm wondering whether I need to just lighten up on that point fly a touch. Probably do. I think my hands are probably too cold to change it. I'll persevere and what I'll try and do is just lift the rod higher and then the fly should sit a bit higher in the river. That is the, the great thing about this style of fishing, you can, because you've got direct contact, you can adjust the depth of your nymphs by the height of your rod. So you can adjust it as it comes down the drift. Often I'll start with a high rod at the top of the run, especially if I'm fishing fast water, and then I can drop the rod as the river deepens through the pool. Well, nothing in there. I'm just going to try some of this far bank now further up. See if we can pick up a fish in there. Mind you, that first one there was, if that's all I catch all day, I've been made up with that. It was a beauty. I'm just prodding away, tapping the nymphs up. It's all prospecting this, just fishing the likely areas. Keep the nymphs drifting, uh, cast after cast after cast. Just lightly, gently does it. The, the rod's so light that you don't feel, you don't really get any arm ache or anything. That's what exactly what these rods are designed for, so they do the job beautifully. Oh, it's getting really chilly now. I think what I'm going to do is finish this uh, little run here. So I'm just fishing a bit of a, a tongue of current as it snakes around one of the boulders. I'll finish fishing this and I'm going to walk down the meadows. There's one more nice kind of steady run downstream. I'm going to fish that and then I'll call it a day because I'm pretty cold and I've, I do actually have a bit of a head cold as well. So I'm not feeling 100% and... Uh, I think standing in a cold river and getting chilly probably isn't the, the wisest course of action but I couldn't not come out today with rain forecast again next week so it looks like the rivers are going to get obliterated once more. Yeah I'm going to get out here and then uh, go and fish downstream. <sighs> Whoa, give me a chance to warm up as well. Right, this is a big pool, quite hard to fish. I'll chuck a nymph into this and see if there's anything just in the in the close in and then walk up river. Hey, the river's a lot narrower here, so there's a lot more flow to it, and uh, the wading's no easier. I'm 
Uh, I'm just going to be concentrating my fly into the slightly slacker bits. If I was summer fishing here, I'd be fishing the very fast water, the white water, and that will hold a lot of fish in this particular beach. But with it being colder after grayling, I'm just looking for just the slightly slacker bits, I think. Uh, just the, the dead bits, just off the sides of boulders or the, the slacks. Or just on the seams of current, that's often a good place as well. Uh, just off on, on the seam as the slower water hits the fast stuff. That can be a good spot. I, I, I'm, I'm a lot more cautious with my wading than I was even five or ten years ago now. I'll get to pools and just go, nah, not fishing it. Especially with salmon fishing in the bigger rivers. Right, keep tapping up. Uh, loads of boulders. The beautiful woodlands now next to the river. We've gone from meadows to woods and it really is pretty. A lot more lighting at this time of year as well. Obviously no trees on the, uh, no leaves on the trees. So if I'm fishing this summer, I'd almost been like a little dark tunnel. Whereas now it's ever so light, lots of light coming in. Okay, onwards and upwards, it's a bit, a bit fast this I think, I need to just skip through this. Fishing a very short line now, I've, I've practically only got, what, a foot of the indicator mono out of the tip of the rod and then the rest is just floor. I'm fishing almost around my feet because I'm having to just search little pockets. Sometimes with this outfit you, you could be fishing at a fair distance actually, you can even shoot a little bit of line. It, or you can, or you can come really close in if you wish to. I can actually get across the river at the minute. Oh, last time I fished it, the podcast that went wrong because I didn't record, I could barely get in. It's just fishing the edges. I did find some fish though. I think they're all just been pushed out of the fast water into the slack, so. They're all congregated together. Right, if we just get a, across the run here, there's a, a just a seam showing a little bit of slack the water next to it so I'm just going to run my nymph just off that seam now see if there's anything waiting on the seam I thought that was a little pull just then actually no all right onwards and upwards The bit I want to get to is about 20 or 30 feet above me now. It's just a, a run of slightly slacker water, which I think should hold a fish. Right, well I've just had a quick change of flies, I've just um, 
I've kept a tungsten fly on the point, but I've put a little shrimp on the dropper that's not got any uh, tungsten bead on it. It's, this bit I'm going to fish now is not too deep. And uh, I think this is the best chance of another fish before I finish. So I just want to get it right. Um, but I've got what we've got here, a 30 foot run of probably decent fishing. There's, there is a big tong of current, well, a tong of current down the middle and a few little snaky bits of current, but it's also got a fairly uh, reasonable, just steady flow to the back end of the pool. So I'm going to start there and uh, fish down. The easiest bit of water to navigate. Well, none of this river is. Right, tap up. Drift the nymphs down. There's one thing about this, oh, fish on, there we go. Just in the slack, just where I thought. This isn't a bad fish again, actually. Let's get the net out, come on. Come on. Yes, yeah, another good fish, about, well, it's got to be just over a pound. And again, I know that's not in the scheme of things, that's in the net now. But for this particular river, the grayling are fairly small. So uh, I'm chuffed a bit. Slip me straight back, here we go. Lovely. So again, that was just right on the edge of the river, just in the slack, and that's where they've been. Let me uh, sort my dropper out, that's fine. What I was about to say was one thing that catches me out at this time of year is because there's no leaves on the trees, it's so much easier to just to wrap your nymph around them because just, I just don't see them. You know, when they're camouflaged against the, the backdrop of the woods, I just don't see these little spindly uh, branches. Well, I'm pleased with that. I'm glad I've had another fish. I'm certainly liking this uh, Euro shrimp today. Mind you, it's been a cracking fly for me, this. It really has over the past two or three years, however long it was since it went online. It really has done some marvellous work with the grayling especially. I'll just turn around and have a go on this other bank, see if there's anything lurking in here. No. Right, two paces upstream, I think. And again, just looking at the river, I'm just looking for anything that looks like it's just got a bit, a bit of depth, a bit of slack to it. Seams of currents. Tapping the nymphs up, letting them sink, and then keeping in contact as I, as they tumble down the river. Yep, yeah, felt that one take it, absolutely nailed it. This feels a good fish again. It is another good fish. It's trying to get downstream and beat, where is it? An old weir, so I'm gonna have to bully this one a bit. Come on, back up. Come up. Come up. 
Go on. Oh, come on, in the fast water. There we are in the net. Perfect. Another one of about a pound. There we go. Superb. Right. That's uh, two out of this little back back eddy here just off the main flow and see if there's another one that one absolutely mullered the fly I love it when grayling do that you you often think of grayling these dainty little soft mouthed little creatures that are just kind of sipping on bits but sometimes they absolutely hammer your fly and um, they take big flies and they take strange flies as well grayling I mean They'll take a streamer, um, the biggest grayling I've ever caught, just over three pounds, actually caught on a salmon fly. I was swinging a uh, hollow cascade for salmon, something nailed it, and you get that kind of heart in your mouth for a second. I could tell it wasn't a salmon, but then saw this flash of silver and thought, oof, what's this? And, um, and then saw its fin, and it was a grayling, a great big monster. Yeah, funny creatures like that, but they take all sorts. And they'll take all sorts of colour, colourful creations as well. Right, I'm going to keep picking up. I think I've about done this little slack here. It's, I've had two out of it and it's only about six foot by kind of three foot. A little pocket of water, so thank you so much for listening. As ever, if you need any help or advice with your fly fishing, it's or to book a lesson or a guided day with us, it's www.peaksflyfishing.com. Um, for buying tackle, equipment, flies, waders, everything online, it's shop.peaksflyfishing.com. And if you're ever in Sheffield, pop into the shop, come and say hello. It's always a pleasure to meet people. Thanks for listening. Take care. Until next time. Bye bye.